dedicated to the strength of the nation, now heard on more than 1,000 radio stations. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Jane Wyatt in Our Big Brother, a United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here's your producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where your motion picture favorites appear in plays we know you'll enjoy. That charming actress of New York stage and motion pictures, Jane Wyatt, is our proudly we hail star. Jane appears in our comedy as Helen Dixon. It's a sophisticated story titled Our Big Brother, in which Helen, the wife, sets out to tame a lion hunter in order to save her husband's love with amusing complications. We'll raise the curtain on Act One right after this brief message from Wendell Niles. Here's a chance for you young men to travel. Yes, you'll travel abroad and be paid for it. You may now enlist directly into one of the two famous U.S. Army divisions now stationed in Japan. These proud outfits, who covered themselves with glory in the recent war, are the 1st Cavalry Division and the 11th Airborne. And if you apply now while quotas are still open, you may become a member of either of these. See your local U.S. Army recruiting station right away. Now once again, our producer. The curtain rises on act one of Our Big Brother, starring Jane Wyatt as Helen Dixon. It wasn't that young Bill Dixon wasn't in love with his beautiful wife, Helen Dixon, but far from it. He had his feet on the ground, all right, Bill did, and was going places in the world. But he was an impressionable young man. Maybe he read too many sophisticated books. Once he read a story by Oscar Wilde. That could be the clue to Bill's behavior that bright, crisp, crunchy morning in October. Bill and the charming young Helen were at breakfast. Both were reading the paper and exchanging newsy items over the coffee cups. Well, 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 well. Sportsman's show attracts thousands to city. Well, so the Countess de Luzy is really suing for divorce. African exhibit to feature lions, elephants, and Sophie the gorilla. She was the former Dolly Dunkirk, you know. Africa. That makes me wonder. I wonder whatever became of my big brother, Lance. I didn't even know you had a big brother named Lance. Well, I haven't heard from him for years. Last time I did hear, he was hunting big game in Africa. Hmm. It's kind of sad the way families can drift apart. Or else be dragged apart, like the Count and Countess. He's contesting the divorce. No. Any objections? Look, darling, any man who'd try to keep his wife against her wishes is the merest of mere mice. Maybe he loves her. Well, where's the man's pride? Or maybe he thinks more of his bride. He's a mouse. Well, I got a lot of work at the office this morning. I better hurry up and get. Uh, one the... minute, William. Hmm? What would you do? Who? When? What? Well, suppose I wanted a divorce. You mean if, if you wanted to marry somebody else? Yes. What would you do? I'd let you. What? I'd let you. you. You mean to say you'd just give me up just like that? On one condition. I'd have to be convinced that the other man was a better man than I am. For me to let you marry an inferior man would be impossible. Well, you're telling me. Otherwise, no objections. William Rob Roy Dixon, how dare you sit there stuffing your shirt and, 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 and mouthing those insulting things. You asked me a question, didn't you? I told you. Oh, I suppose you think you're so sophisticated. You're just being civilized. I... I I, I suppose you think you're so broad-minded. Just being modern, that's all. Bill Dixon, get out of here. I'm going. I hate you to pieces, and, and you can cross Broadway and 42nd Street against the red light. You haven't heard the end of this, you, 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 you libertine. Now, now, Helen, my school day's chum, take it easy. The impudence of that man thing sitting at my table and telling me that any time I didn't want him anymore, I'm free to pick up my bobby pins and go home. I could scream. I believe I will scream. Ah! <sighs> That's better. Don't look now, but I think you've just broken the lease. Hello? Oh, oh, cablegram for Mr. Dixon. Yes, I'm Mrs. Dixon. May I take it? Uh, go ahead, please. Mr. William Dixon, yes. Yeah, Billy Boy. Yes, yes, I've got it all. Thank you. Goodbye. 
Well, for heaven's sake, listen to this, Maida. I'm all ears, but I've got a hairdresser who can fix it. Billy boy, arriving today, Pier 53, steamship Xavier Scala. Meet me at Pier. I'll be carrying my bow and arrow. Who signs it? Robin Hood? Sign your long absent brother, Lance. Lance? He's Bill's brother. Quite an adventurous person, I understand. And if he's good looking. <laughs> There he is, Helen. Hey, Lance! Hey, Lance, over here! Here he comes, Helen. And is he beautiful? Hello there! <laughs> Hello! Uh, you wouldn't be Bill Dixon, would you? <laughs> Not if he had to do it all over again. <laughs> well, Billy boy, how you've grown. That'll hold you for a while, William. Oh, gee, Lance, it's sure swell to see you again. Oh, uh, this is Helen, my little wife. I've grown, too. Hello. Hello. Well, let's let's not just stand around here. The, the hotels are jam-packed, Lance, but I got the dandiest room in the world for you, right in our own apartment. Yes, isn't that lucky? Uh, about the extra room, I mean. And this will be your room, Lance. I hope you'll be very comfortable. Oh, yes, this is fine, fine. Uh, where can I put my bow, please? It's my favorite weapon. I'd hate to have anything happen to it. Do you always hunt with the bow and arrow, Lance? Sure, it's sporting. Gives the quarry a chance. You, uh, take your sportsmanship very seriously, don't you? Yeah, I like a good game, well played and fairly played. Any good game? Well, I... Just, how do you mean? Well, Lance, you're Bill's big brother. I know I can speak frankly to you, knowing that you'll cooperate for Bill's sake. Cooperate in what? in keeping our marriage together. Well, there, there hasn't been a rift. Mm, there will be, unless I can be absolutely sure in my heart that Bill would fight like fury to keep me against all comers. Oh, well, what could I do? I want you to pretend you're falling in love with me. Uh, I'll go see if I can find a nice hotel. Huh? Oh, no, please. I've got to make Bill realize that he wants me very, very much. That's so important to a woman, believe me. I don't think you understand just how very odd that sounds, Helen, but I... Will you do it? Well, I'm Bill's big brother. Well, that's why you and you alone can do it. You owe it to him. Look, could I think about it tonight? Of course. And now may I have a pen and some ink, please? I have a very important letter to write. Well, no sooner had we turned in for the night than my native boy came bounding into the camp shouting, Simba, Buona, Simba, meaning lion. How exciting. Oh, hum. Bill. I seized my powerful longbow and strung it hastily. Well, you can take your time about stringing us. We're in no hurry. Oh, hush, William. Go on, lad. Uh, that lion must have been wounded because he sprang into our clearing blood in his eye. I whipped out an arrow and drew my bow. The lion came straight at me, roaring hoarsely. <gasps> what did he do? He handed the lion a cough drop. I raised my bow and let fly. Well, sir, that heavy hunting arrow went clean through the beast. Excuse me, I'm going out for a walk. Call me when Mickey Mouse comes on, will you? I'm sick of big game. Hmm. He may be sick of it, but I think our medicine is going to do him a world of good, man. You're playing a very dangerous game, Helen. Hello, William. How goes it, Juana? Hello. Uh, nice office you got here, Billy Boy. You been shopping together, you two? Lance and I just had lunch together. Oh. Thought we'd just drop in and say hello to the man who pays the bills. Hello, man who pays the bills. Hello, woman who runs them up. Hey, we just had a look at the sportsman show. Last day today. Oh, then I suppose you'll be trekking back to good old Africa any minute now. Huh? Well, uh... Oh, no, Lance is going to stay a while. He... He's got to finish his book. Book? What book? Yes, Helen, what book? Why, uh, why the book you're, you're writing, of course. Oh, me? Of course. Your book, Tracking the Wild Safari. Remember? Oh, oh you, you mean my, my book? See, Bear, Lance has been writing a book in his room, and he can't leave now. Why not? Is he writing it on our wallpaper? Oh, no, silly. But an author gets in a certain mood, in a certain place, and that's where he has to work. Mm. Anyway... Wouldn't it be nice to have your own brother be the author of a best-selling book? Yeah. Yeah, it sort of would at that. Uh, well, I I've got to get a few chapters written before dinner. I'll see you later, folks, right? Right. Uh, so long, Helen. Bye-bye, Lance. Say, when can I see a few chapters of that book? What book? Lance's book. 
I've got a friend in the publishing business. If he likes the first chapters, he might give him an advance so he can rent a nice, lonely lodge out in the wilderness where he can write like crazy. Oh, he'll like that. Uh, yes, he, uh, he'll like that. Let's be honest, Helen. You don't want Lance to go away. Bill. He's charming and glamorous, and he shoots a better line than I do. William, he, he's your own brother. Yeah, and he's a mighty good man. That'll make things a little easier, anyhow. That'll make what things easier than what? Never mind, little girl. You, you run along now. Now, Lance, when Bill comes in through that door, you've got to be showing me how to shoot a bow and arrow. Yeah. Now, begin. Talk, archery talk. Well, uh, you see, my dear, you hook these three fingers around the bowstring. Show me better. Better? Well, put your arms around me. Uh, yeah. Ah. Then you draw the arrow back slowly and smoothly. Helen, yep. oh. look out. Wings on a monkey. Oh, Bill. Headhunters? Oh, I'm sorry, Bill. It, it slipped. Oh. Oh, well, then let's try it all over again. I, I'll just step out. Oh, she, she's uh, really a very apt pupil. Yeah, apt to kill somebody. Now, me, I catch on slower to things, but I do catch on. William, you're, you're pale. I don't tan as richly as some people we know. Helen, the time has come for me to talk to you. Alone. <laughs> We pause briefly from our story, Our Big Brother, starring Jane Wyatt, to bring you an important message from your government. Fly with the United States Air Force. Yes, young man, you may become a pilot with Uncle Sam's great Air Force. Aviation cadet pilot training is open to you. Qualifications are, you must be unmarried, 20 to 26 and a half years old, and have completed two years of college or the equivalent. If you meet these requirements, get your application for cadet pilot training right away. Any U.S. Air Force recruiting station or Air Force base will provide you with the necessary papers. When you complete your pilot training, you'll be commissioned a second lieutenant in the U.S. Air Force Reserve. And you'll fly Air Force planes with the best of them. And listen, men, you'll earn up to $336 a month as soon as you win your wings. If you put your application in now, you'll be able to qualify for the aviation cadet class that starts in July. Act now. The curtain rises on act two of Our Big Brother, starring Jane Wyatt as Helen Dixon. It is just a few moments later in the Dixon apartment. Bill Dixon, a sadder but no wiser man, still does not know of the perilous game Helen is playing to test his love for her. Having found Helen in his brother's arms, supposedly learning how to shoot a bow, he has decided to have a showdown with her. They are alone in the kitchen while Lance awaits the results in the living room. Helen, let's face it squarely. You're in love with Lance, aren't you? Bill, you know that you're the only one I've ever loved. Well, you mustn't let your loyalty make you say things to me that you don't mean. But I do mean it. I know that everything's been honest and above board between you and Lance. What'd you say? Nothing. Anyhow, Lance is a good man. He's a better man than I am. And I couldn't have lost out to a better guy. Lost out to... Well, you won't even have to change any of the initials on the silver or the linens. And that's worth something these days. William, Rob Roy, Dixon, what are you babbling about I'm anyhow? I'm not going to stand in your way, Helen. But you're, you're, you're not in my way. You're free to marry Lance. I'm free to... In that way, we still keep you in the family. Once a Dixon, always a Dixon, I always say. Free to marry Lance? Of course, honey. I've known from the beginning, ever since he arrived here. I'm going to talk to Lance now, heart to heart. He did it. The primeval gook went and did it. I'll murder that bum. Lance, where's Bill? 
Where'd that white peddler go? Helen, I warned I'll you. have you scout for this. I'll mow him down. I'll report him to somebody for something. That's what I'll do. Helen, Bill's gone for a walk. And I advise you to just calm down and look at things clearly for a moment. Look at things clearly? When my husband doesn't care enough about me to fight for me tooth and nail? Oh, your pride is hurt naturally. But what about losing that nice little guy of mine? What about that? Oh, but do you care? Oh, husbands don't grow on trees. That one does. Now, you see here, Todd. Helen, let's be honest with each other. Let's admit that we love each other. Oh, you and me? Me and, and you? I love you, Helen. Oh, did a lion ever bite you in the head? I love you. I love you as only one who has lived close to the earth and close to life can love. Deeply, beautifully, enduringly. Oh, tell that to the confessions magazines. I love you. Oh, you, you're crazy. I love you as surely and as truly as you love me, Oh, dearest. go away. Now, don't touch me. Say it. Say you love me. Say it. I don't. You do. I doubt if I even like you somehow. We're going to be married, Helen. Up a tall tree we are. Any way you say, darling. I don't want to marry you. It's the only way I'll accept your love. Oh, that's real peachy of you, but I don't love you. I do not love you. Helena. You do not love but you. Helen... Love you, I do not. Oh, you're upset. I... I'll leave you alone to think it all over. But I'll never leave New York without you. I'll feed you, Sam. Oh, easy, Helen. Easy, sister. Dust some rosin on your reason. It's slipping. <laughs> Think of it, Maida. The colossal nerve of the man making love to me. So send him to me. Oh, the impertinence. The nerve of the lunatic. The gall of the wild. Maida, I'm going away. Uh, downtown? Oh, I booked passage on the SS Frenetic for this evening. Oh, look, Peanut Brain, let me talk to Bill. Let me explain that it was all a hoax. Big fun, see? No. Can't you see? It won't change the ugly truth that Bill was ready to, to give me up without a, without a decent struggle. No, Maida. I'd, I'd better start packing now. It's nice of you to come console me like this, Maida, but I'm a man of principle, and I stick to my principles. It's possible to stick to your principles until you've gummed up the works. No man with real self-respect would prevent his wife from marrying the man she really loves, particularly if that man... Is a better man than he is. Uh, yeah. Bill, do you know what ails you? Do I look bad? You've got a Gunga Din complex. What? He, too, was a better man than somebody. Gunga Din. Maida, I consider the incident closed. You mind if I look at the afternoon mail? No, no, go right ahead. With one grand gesture, he closes the incident and opens the mail. Well, look at this. Uh, please remit. This account long overdue. It's a letter from the publisher I sent Lance's manuscript to. Let's see what it says. It's a better manuscript than others, Gunga Din. Dear Bill, I've read your brother's chapters on his African exploits, and I consider it an adventure story of the first magnitude. Get that, Mater, the first magnitude. Yes. The book is written with authority and real skill. It breathes action, romance, titanic conflict. Get that, Maida. Mm -hmm. I tell you, you gotta hand it to my big brother. You gotta give him credit. I'd like to have a co-signer, though. Listen, we liked your brother's book enormously. <laughs> my brother. My big brother. Let's see, it goes on. However, there is one small hitch. Much as we admired the book, we admired it even better... Several years ago, under the title, Bring Him Back Alive by Frank Buck. Mm, go on, go on. Or in few words, your brother's book is a rank plagiarism, a theft of the worst order in our code of ethics. My big brother. I can't believe it. <laughs> oh, say it isn't so. My brother say wouldn't do so. such a thing. Lance wouldn't steal somebody else's book. My pal, he which would steal his brother's wife would steal a stranger's book. I have spoken. Could it? be that Helen's relatives were right, after all, about my relatives? Begins to shape up like a real case for them. No. No Dixon would do such a thing. I'd disown Lance. That's convenient. Anyone who'd do such a thing is no true Dixon and is not a better man than I am. Gunga Din. Where's my hat? Helen's not going to marry Lance Dixon. I'll see to that. Yes, yes. He'll get home and he'll find the inevitable note on the dresser, stained with tender tears. Inevitable. <laughs> What's this? A note on the dresser. From Helen. Dear Bill, by the time you read this, I'll be at sea on the SS Frenetic. 
I'm sorry, Bill, but I just couldn't go on knowing that I didn't mean as much as life itself to you. I just guess I'm selfish that way. I just guess it's because I loved you that way and expected as much from you. Your fresh shirt came today. Your socks are all mended. Use up the cream in the refrigerator and, and don't wash your new wool sweater in hot sun. Take care of yourself. I'll be all right. Goodbye, Willie. Good luck. Fondly, but not yours. <laughs> Helen. Wings on a monkey. She can't do that. Yes, that's frenetic, huh? Well, we'll see about that. Helen. Helen, wait. It's me, Bill. Go away. I, I don't want to know you. Helen, you're not running off with Lance. What do you care? Go away. Go to work. Give me that handbag. I won't. Let go. Let go. I gave it to you. Indian giver. Let go, I say. You had your chance. Let me go. You don't want to go. I can tell. I do want to go. You've got tears in your eyes. I'm allergic to wild oats, which is what you sow. I don't sow. You do sow. Just a minute. Hey, hey, just a second. Can't we arbitrate? Lance. It's you. Yes, but I've known it for years. And you're just in time for a poke in the kisser. Listen, I came down here when I found Helen's note to you crumpled up on the living room floor. Oh, he's always lousing up the house like that. But always. Bill, my love affair with Helen was nothing but a hoax. A hoax? Oh, Ask Helen. It doesn't Helen. matter. Bill wouldn't fight to keep me, and that does matter. But, Helen, you're wrong. Bill's right here, ready to throw punches into me for your sake. That's right. Put him up, big boy. But, Bill, I did not make love to Helen. Oh, you were breathing like a locomotive, that's all. But if I seemed to make love to you, it was because I wanted to frighten you back to your senses. I, I don't love you, and I never did. Well, what's wrong with me? Nothing. I just planned the whole thing far in advance. And where did you steal that yarn? The American woolen mills? Helen... Do you remember several weeks ago when you first broached your scheme to me? I, uh, I asked you then for a pen and some ink. Well? I wrote a letter to myself. Well, here it is, postmarked five weeks ago and still sealed. Bill, I want you to read it. And where did you copy this from? Chesterfield's letters to Pell-Mell? I'll read it, all right. In that letter, I tell in advance everything that I did. I planned what I did to teach you kids a lesson, and that letter proves it. Yeah, that's what this letter says, all right. You see, I have a... Very lovely wife back in Johannesburg, Africa. You have? You mean you're married? Well, Helen, don't look so unhappy about it. Yes, I'm married. I, too, told my wife that if a better man than I am came along... Oh, brother. I see. And besides setting us straight, you saw your chance to play the other man of the Infernal Triangle, right? Yeah, I wanted to get his point of view. Smart girl. Oh, not so stupid. And now I'm going to set you straight, Robin Hood. Don't be so darn modern. You corny gentlemen knock yourselves out being noble. Forget it. That was popular when knighthood was in flower. Is that bad? I prefer to have and to hold. Now listen to me. If that's red blood and not beet bar circulating in your veins, you get back to South Africa and get that wife of yours away from that other man, whoever he is. Okay, I'll book passage first thing in the morning. You'll go right now. But my passage, we I... We could have my ticket. Here. That's the old fight, Helen. Hurry now. But Helen, I... I don't look now, but your ship's leaving. Well, I... Uh, oh, so long, Billy Boy. So long, Lance. Goodbye, Helen. Bye-bye, Robin Hood. Now, hurry. Uh, so long, but I'm coming back to stay. Yeah, boy. With my wife. That'll be wonderful. I'll be seeing you. Bye. So long. Goodbye. There he goes. My big brother. William. Hmm? Who's your girl? Helen. Who's your fella? Willie Dixon. Willie loves Helen. Well. There he goes. My big brother-in-law. <laughs> The curtain falls in the final act of Our Big Brother. Our star, Jane Wyatt, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. You men who are graduating from high school this year, here are some reasons why the U.S. Army is such a good deal for you. For one thing, you can continue your education. Study courses through college level are available to you as a soldier through the United States Armed Forces Institute. You can take all those subjects you didn't have time for in high school. In addition, you'll learn to master a trade or skill. And the best part of it is that you can select the type of training you want. 
Yes, there are more than 60 different trades or skills to choose from. Such things as radio, automotive mechanics, and many others. You make your choice of training even before you enlist. In other words, you look over the field. If you aren't accepted for the school of your choosing, you're not required to enlist. Get all the facts right away at your U.S. Army recruiting station. Now back at the microphone, our star, Jane Wyatt, and our producer. We are proud to present our star at this time in the traditional gesture of the theater, the curtain call. A gay portrayal, Jane Wyatt, and congratulations. Thank you, C.P. It was a pleasure, I assure you. Since your last visit with us, Jane, I'm happy to see further congratulations are in order. Oh? Yes. Pitfall, your last picture for one. Boomerang, which received a photoplay award and gentleman's agreement. Each picture had something of special significance for me, and I love working in all of them. Now that your latest picture is behind you, what are your plans? Well, I, I want to remain in California, at least for a while. Could it be the Charles Lawton group that is keeping you here? Oh, you've heard about it. Yes, Jane, but I would like to hear more. Well, you, you know it's all Shakespeare. And with Charles Lawton, you're one of the great authorities on Shakespearean verse. Oh, yes, we're fortunate indeed to have the benefit of his knowledge and experience. I understand the 12 of you are screened from several hundred. How often do you meet? Three nights a week. We've been meeting for the past few months now. And? Well, we, uh, we exchange ideas, and uh, <laughs> we are learning to read the verse. It's all quite fascinating. It just goes to show that even a star must and does continue to study. Well, Jane, thank you again for a fine performance. I was happy to do it, C.P. But before I go, what is your next play, Bill? Next week, Jane, we have a highly amusing comedy, Almost a Lady, starring Constance Moore. A gay story of a fish and secretary who tried to jump the hurdles of high society. Obstacle, one fiery temper. Sounds grand. I'll be sure to listen. Goodbye, C.P. Goodbye, Jane Wyatt. <laughs> Join us next week, won't you, ladies and gentlemen, when we present the comedy Almost a Lady, starring Constance Moore. Until next week, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> Jane Wyatt appeared through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. Story by Milton Geiger, with orchestra under the direction of Eddie Scrivani. Remember, proudly we hail next time presents Constance Moore. This program was transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking. <laughs>